Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. Coming up on today's show, we got the top buyout candidates for your Chicago Bulls as another NBA trade deadline has came and passed and the Bulls did not make a single trade. And it's actually been since 2021 that the Bulls have not been involved in a trade involving a player the longest streak in the NBA. So on today's show, top buyout candidates for the Chicago Bulls. And obviously we do know the Bulls do still have the disabled player exception from Lonzo Ball. It's set around $10.2 million. So the Bulls can use that for a buyout candidate. And if they don't use it, it just kind of goes away. So this would be the last chance for the Bulls to use that exception this season. And on today's show, I got eight names that could fall into that category as a buyout candidate for the Bulls. But uh, hey, I'll tell you what, if the Bulls do end up signing any of these guys we talk about on today's show, we'll make a video for you guys ASAP. So lock us in, hit that subscribe button as your go-to Chicago Bulls YouTube channel as another disappointing trade deadline has came and passed. But it's still the rest of the season to be played out. So make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel. Now, this is no particular order. Um, but buyout candidates for the Bulls. Uh, number one that we're going to talk about is Daniel House Jr. As he is, is already a free agent after he was traded at the NBA trade deadline. And listen, the Bulls, like in terms of their overall roster right now, would I want them to see or bring in a guard like Daniel House? Probably not. I think if the Bulls kind of where they are kind of slated right now, I would rather have them give all the kind of shot attempts, all the usage rate that they possibly can in their offense just put it towards Kobe White. Put it towards Io DeSumo. Even put it towards another young guard like a Julian Phillips instead of bringing in a guy like Daniel House. I like House as a game. You know, if the Bulls were a, you know, a true contender and, you know, compete for a championship this season, and if you wanted a guy to get you better on the margins, sure, Daniel House can be that option. But, you know, with where the Bulls stand right now, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense. I would rather have them kind of, you know, don't take any shots away from the young talent that we have on this football, our basketball team and just kind of kind of build with our own. So House, I'd probably be out on. Now, a name that I do think is extremely, extremely likely, and if I had to call it right now, I think Joe Harris is going to be a Chicago Bull. Listen, we know the Bulls do have a need for, you know, a more pure shooter on the roster. And, yes, Joe Harris has not shot the ball well this season. Frankly, he has barely played for the Detroit Pistons um, so far this year. I mean, look at the stats right there. I mean, two and a half points per game, less than a rebound, less than an assist, Per night, and listen, he has not shot the ball well from downtown this season. But if I had to predict what the Bulls management is thinking right now, I think they're thinking, oh, wow, we can get another catch-and-shoot shooter off the bench, have some more offensive output. And I think Joe Harris is the guy that I think Joe Harris right now, calling it, we're going to get the notification, Bulls are signing Joe Harris to a one-year $10.2 million deal. If I had to call it right now, they're going to use the DPE on him. But Joe Harris, definitely keep your eyes out on him. Bulls could be bringing him in. Now, kick it to a former top 10 pick in the NBA draft, Killian Hayes. And, you know, Killian Hayes kind of has a joke going around uh, right now that he's the worst basketball player in the league just because he struggled with the Pistons starting off his career. And I'll tell you what, yes, he has struggled throughout his start of his NBA career, but I'd take a chance on him. Like, if the Bulls could somehow bring him in, you know, obviously you can only use the disabled player exception on a one-year deal. So if you were the side Killian Hayes, I would have liked it, you know, maybe be a two- or three-year deal just to keep him – you know, in the organization for a couple of seasons. But this is definitely an option this season for the Detroit Pistons, averaging seven points a night, 2.8 rebounds, 4.9 assists on 41% from the deck. It's a six foot five guard coming in from France. I like his two-way ability. Yes, he has struggled immensely in his start to his NBA career. But, hey, maybe the Bulls take a chance on a young and up-and-coming player. Now, this is another one I do think is extremely likely. If I had to choose two, right now it would be number one, Joe Harris, number two, Kyle Lowry, and wouldn't a Kyle Lowry kind of signing just be perfect for the Bulls? You know, we uh, last offseason at the buyout market, um, or last season, we did bring in Patrick Beverly as kind of that backup guard, and it worked out. I mean, the Bulls' de defense last season, they finished the year top five in defensive rating after bringing in Pat Bev. But I think Kyle Lowry makes a lot of sense for this front office. You know, the Bulls, you know, I don't consider Io DeSumo necessarily a backup point guard, even though he does play that for Chicago right now I think he'd be more of a backup too but the Bulls want a true backup point guard this would 100% be the guy and I think it would be pretty cool you know having a Kyle Lowry DeMar DeRozan reunion I don't know if the Bulls would give him the DPE maybe it's more of a one-year five million dollar deal but you know I do think Lowry could be an option for Chicago definitely at the buyout market him and Joe Harris are the two names that I think are most likely for the Bulls but if you guys want the Bulls to sign anybody let me know who it is who do you want the Bulls to sign at the buyout market 
right now. Let me know your thoughts down below. If I had to pick one, you know what? Just because I'm a fan of DeMar DeRozan, and I'd like to see the bromance kind of continue in Chicago, I'll go Kyle Lowry is the one name I want to sign. But let me know yours down below in the comments section. Before we get into four more names the Bulls could sign at the buyout market, I got to give a huge shout out to Prize Picks, today's sponsor of today's edition of the Bulls Report by Chat Sports. And Prize Picks, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. All you got to do, you are going to choose two or more players. They're going to give you some projected stat types, and all you got to do is choose more or less. Super Bowl is this Sunday. This is the lineup I'm rolling with. They got a sweet deal going on right now for Patrick Mahomes, where he's, uh, it is only set at half a passing yard. I'm going to go more on that, obviously. Then I think Pacheco is going to find the end zone. I'm going to go more on half a rushing or receiving touchdown for him. McCaffrey, I think he's going to have it going out of the pass game as well this weekend. So more on 35 and a half receiving yards. Whether you want to fade with my picks or ride with my picks, make sure you guys do do it at PrizePicks. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link for that in the comment section and description of today's show. Carrying on here with the top buyout candidates for the Bulls, Marcus Morris could be an interesting option for Chicago. I was always a big fan of Marcus Morris in the NBA. He was kind of that prototypical 3 and D wing. He can knock down an open shot in the flow of the offense, but he is kind of a cook product at this point. He's not the same Marcus Morris that you guys remember back with his, you know, Boston Celtics days, days where he was really effective with them. You know, this season only averaging 6.7 points a night, 2.9 rebounds. You know, listen, I think he would be a... You know, if this was prime Marcus Morris, I'd be all in on him because I actually think he would offer a good little yin and yang next to, you know, Patrick Williams. But, you know, I'd probably be out on a guy like Marcus Morris. I just, again, I would rather have these, you know, I don't want the Bulls to sign anybody that's going to hinder the development of some of their young guys. Like, still let Io, Kobe White, and Patrick Williams, those are the big three that I want to up their shot attempts, up their usage rate in the second half of the year. And I think signing a guy like Morris, I think it would obviously, you know, hurt Patrick Williams a little bit because he wouldn't be getting the ball as much. So I'd probably be out on Morris. But, again, a, another option to keep your eyes on. Now talk about a reunion here. Uh, the most unstoppable move in NBA history, I'll call it as that, Robin Lopez. His little sky hook, jump hook um, was unguardable for the Bulls, and he is a buyout candidate. I don't think Robin Lopez would want to come to Chicago by any means. I think he's going to want to go, you know, to a contender. But he was with the Bucks this season, and uh, – you know, they obviously ended up trading him, and then the Kings bought him out. So, listen, he's a good option, but, you know, if the Bulls are going to bring in a big, it would probably be more of that prototypical, like, athletic forward, like that power forward, that Aaron Gordon type of player because you already have Vooch, you already have Andre Drummond, and I will say there are rumors about the Bulls buying out Andre Drummond. I don't think that's going to happen whatsoever. I think Drummond's still on this roster the remainder of the year. But, hey, if you want a third center on this team, Robin Lopez would be a choice as well. In terms of another guard, though, Spencer Dinwiddie is hitting the market right now. And, hey, talking about another Bulls legend. He was terrible with the Bulls, but he obviously had his tenure here in Chicago. But Dinwiddie would be a fun option um, for Chicago. But, again, all of these guys, like, I just kind of keep getting back to the same point. Like, I don't want to bring in a guy like Dinwiddie if it means Kobe White's going to get less shots. Io DeSumo is going to get less shots. Like, I still want the Bulls, like, yes, you can still try to remain competitive. And you can still try to, you know, compete in the Eastern Conference here. But, you know, you could do it on the backs of your young cats. Like, you don't need to bring in all these veterans. And it just constantly feels like, you know, if you would make a move like Dinwiddie or a move like, you know, Daniel House or one of these guys, it would just be kind of putting a Band-Aid over an open gash on your arm. Instead of just letting it, you know, just admitting you, you know, a veteran's not going to get you over the hump is pretty much what I'm saying with the Bulls. And, you know, Dinwiddie, I don't think he's going to sign here. But, again, just another name that you got to keep your eyes out on. Uh, the last name we're going to talk about today, Victor Aladipo. Listen, this would have been a fun name a couple years ago. I was a huge fan of him coming out of Indiana. Um, listen, I loved Aladipo's game. You know, that prototypical athletic guard can put pressure on the rim. But, you know, it doesn't make sense for the Bulls to bring him in. Again, probably not. And that's like kind of gets me back to this whole point, you know, with these uh, with the Bulls here. It's just like, you know, you have all these, you know, these buyout candidates that you can, you know, obviously sign. But, again, if you – bring in a guy like Aladipo, if you bring in a guy like Joe Harris, you know, whoever it may be, what is it really changing your final outcome on the season? Like, is it making the Bulls a potential, you know, instead of, let's just say they somehow make the playoffs after winning the play-in tournament, you lose in five instead of four to the Milwaukee Bucks or Boston Celtics? Like, is that really what we're trying to do here? So, listen, I just, I just don't really get it for the Bulls. I don't think any of these guys make any sense at all, but I think it's a perfect segue to ask this question. You know, after the deadline, 
Bulls not making another trade for three seasons in a row. Think about that. The Bulls haven't performed a player trade since 2021. It's just sad. Are the Bulls the biggest joke in all of sports? I've already gotten comments about that saying they're the worst run organization in all of, major, uh, all of them four major sports leagues, and I tend to agree right now. But why for yes and for no down in the comment section. And make sure you guys are subscribed. Hey, if the Bulls sign any of these guys, we'll have a video for you guys ASAP. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Bulls go another deadline without making a move, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. But thank you guys so much for watching today's show. Thanks for all the support on the channel as of recently. And we'll see you guys next time. Go Bulls.